all things work together for good for those who love Christ, God, and are called to his purpose, our purpose in Christ, <clears throat> in God's will. So today, this morning, I, I've just come off a basically a three-hour course to do with driving awareness in Norfolk, UK. This is something they do in the UK to offer you a course plus a fee instead of a fine plus three penalty points on your license. And most people would accept a course fee slightly less than the fine but no points. So this was not something I was expecting. I wasn't expecting to be uh, uh, caught speeding by a, a speed camera in the UK. Otherwise I wouldn't have uh, been summoned to pay a fine or go on the course. So in life things happen that can be unexpected. Things unexpected things happen to us and there are consequences for them and obviously I was caught speeding on a camera I wasn't aware about and it wasn't a, a, a huge number of miles over the speed limit but it was enough to trigger the camera to take a picture of my car and an automatic fine is given or an automatic letter is issued so I chose to go on the course and I knew there would be purpose there. So I carried various cards on me to do with Christ, John 3.16 and a prayer to offer people the opportunity to give their lives to Christ by their own will. So I learnt a lot from the course. The presenter was an excellent present, uh, presenter. He knew his subject. It was very educational. And uh, we made notes. We were given a booklet to take away, but we made notes. And I learned a lot about how to drive better in my car, my physical car. But of course, because we're born of God and we have the Holy Spirit, who's our teacher, he used the information to teach me about the spiritual, the spiritual aspect or application of driving a car. And if you liken our life to a vehicle, who's in control of that vehicle? The person in the driving seat who has the uh, steering wheel, he has the ownership of the car and he's in control. And can our lives as Christians be improved? Of course. We all need, in the sense of a driving instructor alongside us, to help us to know how to drive properly and to improve our driving skills and experience day by day, year by year. And of course, in spiritual terms, it's Christ who's alongside us in that sense, by the Holy Spirit, our instructor, advisor, counsellor, teacher. And God's ways are perfect, and he wants us to control our lives and the direction we're going to be perfect in control of ourselves. And not only is Christ beside us by the Holy Spirit helping us, he's also in us once we become born again. And of course the process of improving our driving skills, and I'm talking about how we control our life in Christ, as a Christian, a disciple of Christ, the ability to control ourselves is within. And we know that is the fruit of the Spirit. 
Galatians 5, verse 22 forward, the fruit of the Holy Spirit culminates with self-control. The issue of control of self can be a difficult issue for certain church leaders who try to control people to do what they, the church leaders, want the people to do. And this is always going to be an issue because at the end of the day it's about self-control. Once a person is born again, they become accountable to God for their life, the teaching, the instructions, the counselling, directly by the Holy Spirit, but also indirectly through other members of the body of Christ. And that brings us to a point of being accountable one to another for our life in Christ. Ideally, husbands, your wife is born again, she has the Holy Spirit, and she can be your co-pilot, your co-driver in your vehicle, not a backseat driver, but alongside you in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, to help you to navigate your life where you are in control of your life. The wife, born again with the Holy Spirit, can give you godly advice, godly instruction, godly counsel. And she might have the gift of prophecy, so she might see a danger up ahead in the future that you, husband, don't see for yourself. And of course, Ephesians 4 and 5 is about submission one to another. Submit one to another out of reverence for Christ. And there's no point having arguments in the car. You have to resolve which direction you're going in together, what the destination is, what the vision is, the route to get there. But you have to work it out between you as husband and wife, born of Christ in the Holy Spirit, both of you. Now your wife may want to drive, so you take it in turns to drive. And then the roles are reversed, that you become the navigator, the, the co-driver, the co-pilot, so to speak, the one with the map, giving your wife advice on direction, even speed of travel. And, and this is like our Christian life is meant to be, in twos. It's very hard for two to agree on anything, but that's what Jesus said. If two of you can agree on anything, it will be done on earth as it is in heaven, according to the will of God the Father. So driving a car perfectly means you'll have no accidents, you won't break the speed limit, you'll be aware of the dangers of people stepping out in front of you, you won't have crashes, your driving will be perfect, the right speed, but more than that, in spiritual terms, with the gift of prophecy, Holy Spirit gift of prophecy, you won't even begin your journey if you know there's danger ahead of you. And I'm talking spiritually. But then you can apply that to physically. If you're traveling in a car and the Lord tells you to stop, and you may not know why, but you know it's the Lord, and you disobey the voice of God and you don't stop, and there's an accident up ahead, and you plow into it, and God was trying to warn you to stop. Now this is us being sensitive to God's voice. In the context of Jesus saying to his sheep, my sheep hear my voice. 
And yes, we are in control of our lives, but we also have Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit, teaching us, even to the point of warning us to stop. This is a real story from about 30 years ago when I was at Bible College here in Norwich, UK. A group were coming down from Scotland back to Norwich and the driver was the principal of the Bible College itself. And he had a car full of students, associates. So there was four or five people in the car, all packed up. They'd been away for the weekend. They were coming back to Norwich. They started early. They got onto the main road from Scotland back into England, the A1M, the motorway. No sooner had they got onto the motorway, the Holy Spirit said to the driver, the principal of the Bible College, to pull off at the next services, where the coffee bar was and the toilets and the petrol station, etc. So he said to his group, I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit has told me to pull off. So we're going to pull off, have a quick break, toilet break, have a coffee, we'll come back to the car in half an hour and then we'll head back to Norwich. We'll pick up the journey again and we'll continue the journey in half an hour. So that's what they did. They all piled back into the car, got back on the slip road to the motorway and there was a traffic jam. And so they asked somebody, they heard the report on the news, there'd been a, a multiple car pileup just further down on that motorway. And they made the inquiry when? And you've guessed it, it was half an hour before. So the Holy Spirit knew there was going to be an accident and he told the principal of the Bible College to get the car off the road and wait. And of course, they weren't hurt, they weren't injured, and this was God preempting a dangerous situation for those who hear. God has told us very clearly to eagerly desire Holy Spirit gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. It is for us to want to receive the Holy Spirit in such a way, not to fear the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, the baptism of fire, just like the early disciples received the Holy Spirit as fire to give them the holy boldness to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ on that first day of Pentecost, to go out boldly with courage beyond any human type of emotion, the courage to go and preach to the murderers of Christ and tell them the truth. Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah and you, citizens of Jerusalem, you mob, killed him. And of course, they cried out, what must we do? Repent and believe in this Messiah, the Lamb of God. The blood of the Lamb takes away the sin but you have to repent. You have to admit you're a sinner, you've done wrong, you need a saviour, and you, you must recognise that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the only begotten Son of God, came from heaven and he died for you and your sin. And that's the truth. That's the unshakable truth, that's the unchangeable truth, and that truth will not change ever. For as many as believed in Christ, who came to him, he gave them the right to be called sons. Sons and daughters, but sons, small s. Cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Clothed with the righteousness of Christ.
There was purpose for me to be at the course today, yes, to learn how to drive my physical car better and to repent of my wrong ways of driving, even now my bad habits after 50 years of driving, to become a better driver. But also spiritually, I learned so much today. Applying the physical lesson, if you like, of driving a physical car into spiritual terms. And of course, at the end of the course, I spoke to the presenter. I spoke to the two people at my table. And I gave them the cards with John 3.16 and the prayer that they can apply to their own life to enable them to receive Christ as Saviour. Even on the way out, everybody had gone. I was on my way out. I was the last one to leave the room. And there was a group of boys. And the venue was the Norwich City Football Club. And these groups of boys in front of me, going down the corridor, the last two went through the doors. The door was slamming closed and one boy put his foot out and kept the door open. I made a natural joke with him. I said, fancy footwork, you should play for Norwich City. And of course he smiled because this is the youth group that they are bringing into Norwich City Football Club. And they liked the joke. So that's when I gave that boy the card. And I said, share that with your friend, not religion, the Holy Spirit will help you. He will show you the truth. And that is the truth itself. That as many are receiving the Holy Spirit, the teacher, he will show them the true Jesus Christ, not a religious Jesus, but the truth, the way, the life, the real Jesus Christ. So all things work together for good. Because I was speeding, not by very much, just over the limit, it triggered a camera to take a picture of my car. I then got a fine and an option to take the course or to pay the fine and have the points on my license. I chose to take the course and avoid the points on my license which would have put my car insurance up for five years. So there's a net saving there, obviously. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you have enabled us to learn by our mistakes. And of course, Jesus, you say it, whatever the sin is, whatever the mistake has been, to go and sin no more. And that is our attitude, to be dead to sin, alive to Christ, dead to sin, to reject sin, to submit to God and resist the devil. And we continue our journey in Christ today, brethren of the one God, as the body of Christ, individually, but also in our twos and threes, fours and fives, even large groups, like a minibus. It is about, it is about on the narrow way going forward, being determined and focused just as we're taught, neither go to the left nor to the right, but to listen to the Holy Spirit, to go the way of Christ, the narrow way of Jesus Christ. God bless you, brethren of the one God, the 28th of September, 2022. John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. Pray for us as we pray for you. And thank you for my encouragement. 
Thank you for being my encouragers. Thank you for encouraging me, is what I mean to say. Because your feedback and your prayers, I value. God is changing us, one degree of glory to another. We are being changed in front of people's very eyes. We are being changed, transformed, conformed into the likeness of Christ by the Holy Spirit within us. We must preach the true gospel of the true Christ one day of salvation at a time. God bless you. We'll speak again by the grace of God. God bless you.